Uh, hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Fu Chao from China Mobile, and uh, I'm uh, responsible for the uh, uh, architecture design for the Telecom Integrated Cloud, which is the future network structure for China Mobile within China. Uh, and uh, we actually begin the, the design of the uh, so-called TIC, I guess, uh, in 2015. And uh, we basically finished most of the design for the core cloud uh, earlier last year. And we were planning to do field deployment for core cloud uh, this year. And so then we, we, we try to focus up more on edge tech. Uh, we identified that there are a lot of uh, uh, issues that actually differentiate the core and the edge. So we hope that uh, Oh, we could uh, have more things on edge uh, tick uh, that we could expose and then eventually work out the architecture. So uh, in today's slides, I would like to share more about uh, what we think about the edge tick, the services we have, uh, the requirements we have, the architecture we have, and also some of the ongoing work within China Mobile. Uh, so, like I said, I will uh, have this slides uh, into uh, four items. Uh, the first, I will go into services, and then based on the service, uh, and to uh, concluding to the requirements actually for the edge. And then uh, through the, the requirements, we will eventually have the architecture design, which we proposed now, and if, uh, finally, it's the best practice in China Mobile. So talking about the edge services, uh, with the emergence of 5G, we see that lots of new services with specific requirements for low latency and high bandwidth, and also huge uh, multicast packet load actually comes into being, which actually makes the extension of cloud to edge quite important, so as to meet the latency requirements and save transport resources. Uh, when we're talking about the edge services, we and uh, we usually would like to categorize them into three categories. One is uh, the, the uh, telco services, which is the user plane, uh, like the uh, uh, gateways, uh, 5G user plane, things like that. These services, they would like to stay uh, in the edge so that it will be more closer, uh, so that will be closer with the end users and provide a better user experience. And also there could be services like MEC, which which uh, will uh, have more uh, third-party uh, applications uh, located at the edge to provide more fancy uh, edge services like AR, VR. And also there, uh, there is another uh, kinds of use case which we call as beyond uh, mobile edge, which is the actually the edge services located at the user uh, side, at, at the customer premises, that will actually pr probably stay in some of the factories uh, uh, that will provide uh, edge services there. Uh, these uh, services are actually all what we call as edge services and what we are all cons consider to um, construct our edge cloud. So I, I try to give some of the uh, typical use cases we're now thinking of uh, for edge and which we are also collaborating with uh, vendors and partners on the use cases. Uh, the first is about the enterprise private network, which provide enterprise local network support with edge services, uh, so that the local traffic uh, through 5G will go directly into the local network without going to the core to save latency and transport resource. Also provide customized services for the enterprise users. So this is a use case we are actually now working on with the enterprise users. And the second one is about the CDN. The traditional CDN, they, they actually stay in the edge of the broadband uh, network, but as, and the, the mobile users, if they want to visit CDN, they actually have to go to the mobile, mobile core and then back to the edge. So uh, this, uh, with this uh, edge services, uh, the mobile user actually can visit CDN directly through edge cloud rather than going to the core then back to the broadband edge. So this will greatly reduce the mo mobile user latency and save traffic load as well for the mobile core. And the third use case is about uh, live sporting events, which provide users with low latency, for example, video back services by utilizing the MEC, at the, which is located at the edge. First use case about some real-time data backhaul uh, with the UAV, uh, which will provide real-time data backhaul for UAV with uh, storage at the edge. We actually um, 
We provide various services uh, with this UEV. We have a uh, lot of uh, uh, use case discussion with uh, the, the smart grid uh, in, in China and also about the base station inspection in, in, in China Mobile. Uh, this could be a use case that probably uh, uh, we have in the future. And the last use case is, uh, is about the vehicle to everything services, which provide real-time vehicle network uh, with a uh, server stay at the edge so that it could meet the very short uh, latency uh, requirement. So these are actually uh, use cases that we are now thinking that probably will be quite uh, 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 practical uh, in, in, in the future edge scenarios. Uh, and uh, then we go to the requirements. So First, I would like to talk more about what we call TIC, the Telecom Integrated Cloud. This actually is the future network structure we designed for China Mobile. We think that the future network for China Mobile will be constructed with uh, multiple TICs. They are stand unit, standard units that are constructing the future network. They are deployed in a hierarchical manner. We see that we have core TIC uh, deployed in a central places uh, like in, in uh, regional or in province level. And they, they will basically support the centralized control plane service. And then we have uh, lots of edge tech, which will uh, deploy at the city level, county level, and even access level. And they will support the distributed user plane services and edge computing capabilities. Uh, talking about the number, uh, the, the number of uh, core tech probably will be over 100, but the, the, the number of edge tech will be more than that. We will have about like 600 uh, edge tech at the city level, uh, about more than 3,000 at the county level, and probably more than 100 uh, thousand and access level. But these are all depending actually on the use cases and the service we actually want to deploy at the edge. And uh, we're looking at uh, the network uh, structure for China Mobile. Uh, you see that uh, China, Mobile, China is, a, is a, uh, it's a huge country, so that we have uh, multiple layers uh, from the UE to the access level, to county level, and city level. This might not be the same with other operators, uh, with other countries. But uh, we, we, we hope that the whole methodology we are now using uh, to analyze uh, the edge tech uh, could probably be re reused with the others. So that's why we like to share this. We could see that uh, actually for all, almost all the telco operators, we actually have uh, enough uh, central offices located already in the edge. So uh, some reconstruction and redesign probably should be done so that we could ha have them support the edge services. But we, we should also understand the constraints at this level so that uh, we could work out the detailed architecture based on the constraints we have uh, at the central, at the edge, level, edge cloud level. Uh, we actually, uh, we are talking about the bandwidth and then uh, latency. Actually, they are the main constraints to decide uh, the deployed location of each edge services. So to be uh, specifically, if you have a specific uh, edge services that come into your cloud and try to find somewhere to deploy it, the first two questions you actually have to ask is, uh, uh, what's the service end-to-end uh, -end latency requirement is and what's the service bandwidth uh, requirement is. And based on these two, you can actually have a quite clear idea of uh, where exactly this uh, services should deploy. We did some survey on the uh, China Mobile's uh, network architecture, and we have these uh, numbers that we could uh, probably uh, expose. Uh, at the access level, the end-to-end -end delay is around two milliseconds, and uh, up to the city level, there will be around four milliseconds. So you could see that the end-to-end -end delays actually is uh, quite short to meet most of the requirements of the edge services. But this end-to-end -end delay actually have to count into the radio access, the, the transmission, and the gateway of uh, the, the, net, the, the, the uh, central office. And also, uh, if you use uh, virtualization technology, you have to count into the virtualization latency that it brings to the, the whole delay. And uh, the transmission bandwidth is what we uh, think that we will provide uh, until 5G. It's about 50 gigabits at the access level and more than 200 gigabits at the city level. So based on all these uh, numbers, we can actually uh, have a kind of a, a, a 
results of all the, the edge services where they should be located. Here I listed uh, some of the services uh, that we think that will first be deployed in our edge cloud. So you can see most of them, they are telco services like uh, SA Gateway, uh, uh, user plane for 5G, uh, but there, there will be also other uh, services like MEC, CDN, and probably there will be in providing enterprise uh, and residential uh, applications here. So we, we think and looking on their d delay and their bandwidth demands and also we take in consideration of the current location of these services so that we could make sure that we could enough maintainers uh, at the same level for virtual applications as well. So you can see the, the results here that uh, at the county level and access level, the most common uh, edge services will be the CRAN, CU and the MEC. Uh, especially for access level, that will be uh, MEC uh, for the very low latency applications like uh, vehicle uh, kind of uh, services. But at the city level, there will be uh, lots more uh, on telco uh, edge uh, services like SAE Gateway, 5G user play, and enterprise virtual CPE, and also CDN. And uh, then, based on these uh, deployments, we could have a conclusion of actually some uh, basic requirements uh, for the city level data center and county level or access level data center. Uh, for example, for city level, we see that the number of the servers might be a few hundreds. And uh, probably we have some requirements for the acceleration uh, devices like uh, SmartNIC or SLV. And container, for now, we think that uh, not, it's not quite necessary for now, but suggest to be deployed in the future when we have 5G in the place and when we have containers uh, applications in the place. And this, uh, we, we, we kind of think that distributed storage is uh, kind of necessary at this level, taking consideration of applications like city and at this level. But for county level and access level, the number of servers might be a few dozens, or even there will be much less at the access level. And uh, the acceleration device should be a lot at this level, taking consideration that we will have lots of third-party applications for MEC and to be deployed in, in, in counties and access. So FPGA, GPU, SmartNIC, all of these resources might be uh, appear at this level. Container is necessary. And also, there, there are actually small demand on storage at this level if you do not uh, have city at this level. So probably local storage is, is enough. And also we have uh, some, uh, uh, an, what is wrong with this? Uh, also I ha we have some uh, uh, survey on the central office conditions actually at this edge. We see that actually they have limited space, power, cooling system, building structure. This actually will bring constraints when you are actually uh, deployed the edge cloud here. So, Probably edge customized server is necessary so that these servers are lighter in weight, smaller in size, and they, they will cost fewer power, and these things probably should be necessary at the edge level. Uh, there are some numbers here which we, could, we would like to show about the actual uh, constraints at each level. We'll bring you more information about that. So in conclusion, we actually have uh, the features for edge we would like to talk about. Uh, we see that uh, the edge different from core, especially in edge lo located at access and county level. They are quite highly distributed. The space and power are quite limited in edge cloud, leading to constraints on device of the edge cloud. And they have uh, these features we conclude. The first is lightweight, like, like we said that because you, you, you consider the constraints of uh, the power, the space, uh, the, the number of servers actually can put into the central office is limited. We, if you want to take the full advantage of uh, these servers putting in the edge, probably lightweight control is necessary. When we're talking about light control, on the one hand is about the ultra trading and VNF things, VNFM things. We hope that uh, probably these things will be all centralized and will be remotely controlled the, 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 the VMs and SDN at the edge level. So that means that there will be unnecessary to be deployed auto trader and VMF at the edge level. And then about the VM and SDN, in some access uh, or county level, when you have uh, perhaps uh, less than 20 server deployed, probably a lightweight VM and SDN is necessary at that circumstance. 
And also the second is about remote provisioning. This is something when we consider, consider that the edge cloud is rather distributed. And uh, for the central office at the, the county level and access level, probably it's uh, impossible that you have uh, a cloud expert actually sitting there and maintain the cloud. So probably the remote provisioning is important not only for Orchestrator and VNFM, but also for the OpenStack. So multi-region will be somehow should be used so that we could have one cloud maintainers a city and probably city level and maintain multiple clouds at counties and access level. And the third is about the resource heterogeneity. This is uh, quite apparent because uh, we have uh, we would like to open this uh, infrastructure not only to telco users but also to third-party users, IoT users. So it expected that we will have VMs, containers, bare metals, all coexisted in this level. So that that will bring some problem to us. Is first is how to manage all these uh, heterogeneous uh, resources. We have OpenStack, we have Kubernetes, but how could they work together? Another thing is about the manual workflow. We now actually have the manual uh, specification with the own uh, orchestrator, VNFM, and VM as OpenStack, uh, OpenStack as VM uh, working together. We have the workflow. The specification, I still have to say, is on. on on the work. But now you bring Kubernetes in, there will be a different uh, workflow that we have to design. And the last is about the acceleration that I mentioned. Uh, because of we have the low latency, high bandwidth, uh, demand large computing services require. So probably SRV, uh, GPU, FPGA, a smart NIC, and even network processing, a lot of uh, acceleration technology will be up here, here. So I guess that there will be two aspects that we should think about when we're talking about acceleration. One is uh, at the, the management, management layer, um, how OpenStack uh, should expose these uh, acceleration capability to the orchestrator, to the VN VNFM, so that when uh, orchestrator try to deploy a VNF uh, which have uh, specific requirements of the acceleration resources, they could actually know which nodes should be deployed. Uh, another thing is about unified API that actually could, should, could help decouple the applications uh, sitting above with the acceleration resources sitting at the hardware layer. And this will help us to actually decouple these uh, uh, software and hardware layer and help us to bring the agility to this uh, whole uh, edge network. So these are the four, uh, four aspects we're thinking, keep in mind when we are doing the archite architecture design. So here comes uh, some of our thoughts about the, the edge architecture. So we, we try to give an edge cloud architecture, but uh, we, we, we realize that it will be quite complicated taking on into consideration of the wide distribution, about the lot, lot of services here located. Uh, so you, you, you actually cannot give uh, one or two types of edge cloud, it's difficult. So we see that this, uh, uh, there will be co commandary servers here, there will be customized servers here, there even will be physical network functions here located at edge. There will be VM, containers, and bare metal located here. So there will be a lot of problems staying in this uh, whole architecture. We then try to give more details so when we go to the city level. We see that city level clouds usually they are quite comparably uh, large scale. So it will be quite similar with the core cloud. However, since you want to put in a lot of user play uh, services here, you will have to think about the data forwarding things. Uh, so probably some specific forwarding servers and acceleration technologies is necessary at this level rather than in core. But we see that probably uh, customized uh, servers is not necessary here because the cloud is big enough. And the central office uh, uh, located at this uh, uh, level, some, somehow the, the environment is much better to be redesigned as a data center. And go to the county and access level, the, the environment is uh, even more harsh at this level. And uh, they are comparably small scale with fewer uh, services. Uh, and the central office is not, not that good. So uh, we kind of thinking that probably customized, uh, uh, customized uh, server uh, will be up here at this level. And uh, lightweight, OpenStack lightweight SDN controllers uh, will be up here at this, this level as well. Uh, this slides try to present the kind of the, the resource management ac architecture what we think of, but this is still under discussion. We hope we could get a lot of feedbacks on the communities as well. 
we, we think that uh, at the core cloud, like I said, Ultrastrator, EMS, VNFM, they will be deployed in, in a central way in the core cloud. The, clo uh, the scale of the core cloud will be larger than 100 nodes. They will, uh, they will have a fully deployed metal system, and the cloud resources will be managed by even one or even more OpenStack cloud taking into consideration of the nodes you actually have to manage. And then down to the city level, the Ultrastrator and the VNFM probably will not be deployed here, but they will, the OpenStack will be remotely controlled by the Ultrastrator, stay in the core. Uh, the, the, the scale here at the city level will be 20 to my, maybe hundreds of uh, nodes. Uh, but uh, we think that uh, the OpenStack here, they are not only have to be capable of managing the, the local nodes, but also capable of managing the remote nodes uh, in counties and access level. And uh, by using the multi-region technology with a shared keystone and a horizon in the city level, but with uh, uh, other Nova, Neutron, those services located at the county and access level. So going down to the county and access level, we will have to look into the scale, actually. If the scale is, for example, less than 20 nodes, probably lightweight make more sense at this level. Uh, but uh, if the scale is more than 20 nodes, I guess that lightweight cannot be uh, capable to uh, manage that, ma that many nodes. So probably a uh, regular OpenStack should be deployed. Uh, but this should be remotely controlled by the city level open stack as well. In this kind of architecture, we expect that uh, uh, um, cloud maintainers could only sit in, at the city level and remotely control the uh, tenants, uh, the, the network, uh, the, the nodes uh, at the county level and access level. So, uh, like I said, this is uh, still an architecture under discussion. Uh, and uh, taking this in mind, we were talking about the resource management, the disaster recovery. Uh, Telco Cloud, normally we actually do not require disaster recovery at the virtual resource level. So that means that we do not require disaster recovery for OpenStack. Because uh, almost all the services, Telco services actually put in on the Telco Cloud, they have their own DR sch schemes. But since we use the, the multi-region, we're kind of thinking that the specific design for DR should be considered for this multi-region open stack, especially for Keystones and Horizon. So DR set, uh, we should probably choose a DR set at the same level of the city uh, cloud or probably a lower level uh, at the county cloud, but probably there should be a DR site for these uh, two services. Uh, and uh, then we, we go to the uh, manual part uh, where we're talking about the management of the containers. We see that uh, this uh, d new container resources actually require a new ma management system, which brings the Kubernetes also into the man uh, manual system as well. Uh, the figure on the left side, uh, we actually, uh, currently we have, uh, I guess, a uh, lot uh, quite uh, complete uh, specification about the NS go to VNFM and to VM. But actually when we bring uh, Kubernetes in, you, you also have uh, microso microservice uh, templates and container templates that have to be designed and coordinated with the other templates in this level. And also talking about the management system, we also have to consider about the Mac. Because uh, Mac is uh, actually a typical service which we plan to put in the edge. So they have also have to fit into the manual architecture in a fee. So here I borrowed a picture from the uh, technical report uh, from the SE Mac group. They actually have a fine design of uh, how Mac fits into the NFE architecture. We see that the NFE uh, Mac platform defined the management and orchestration of Mac. So these models should also fit into the manual. So some specific functions and also interface uh, should be enhanced and designed in, 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 in the manual system. So uh, for now, I'm not talking too much about the architecture, but I guess there are still actually some open questions. Like I said about acceleration, these are still ongoing work with China Mobile. We still, uh, we're trying to figure out ways and hope I could bring more um, progress here in a future uh, OpenStack Summit. And the last is about some ongoing practice in China Mobile. So we're, we're actually trying to drive this work uh, in multiple ways. And the first way is on standards and open source. Other ways, uh, the, the, the second is about some uh, few trials, experiments. 
we we, we hope that the architecture we work internally, we discuss in, internally, they could be open to the uh, standards and open source communities so that we could get uh, more feedbacks and make sure that uh, this ar architecture could be supported by the open source and the standards. And uh, also we have lots of few, trial, few trials so that we could make sure that the current vendors' products could support the architecture we actually have and also we could work out that the gaps actually exist. So about standards and open source, uh, we, st uh, we started the, the Edge Cloud project in OpenNFE. We intend to focus on the Edge scenarios, output limited number of Edge reference platforms based on the requirement analysis and architecture design. Uh, this project is uh, officially discussed in ONS uh, uh, this uh, March, and then the, the, the project is uh, uh, on board on April. So we kind of actually begin already some of the requirement analysis and architecture design work here. We, we plan to have our first release of uh, scenarios this September, this September, and that will be the uh, release for uh, uh, ONAP, Ultra 3D with uh, Kubernetes and OpenStack together, taking in consideration of uh, the requirements of uh, Edge in the scenario. And also, we, we know about the ongoing work for Acrino, targeting to provide end-to-end -end edge stack. Uh, we ha they have C code from Wind River, Titanium Server, and Intel in VSDK. And we know that OpenStack have the edge computing working group fo focusing on some OpenStack requirements on edge. Channel Mobile is also engaged in this activity. And also about the Mac uh, RSG, uh, we are following that uh, work as well. And I would like to talk more about the OpenMV Edge Cloud projects. I'm the PTO for this project. So the objective, uh, we would like to promote this uh, uh, project into four uh, aspects. First is about the uh, requirement we are, we are trying to analyze. We try to see lots of uh, Edge services, including telco services like CRAN, uh, SE Gateway, and also other third-party applications. I hope we could translate these uh, Edge service re requirements into deployment requirements of OPNFE components. And uh, also another thing aspect is we would like to guide the evolution of uh, the Faro specification so that we could have a Faro lab specific, specific for Edge Cloud scenarios. And uh, the initial goal of this project, actually the second bullet, is about the scenario design. OPNFV scenarios actually are reference platform for specific uh, uses. And for now, we see that actually there is no specific um, reference platform for Edge. So I guess that is uh, actually the, the target for this project to provide specific reference platform, specifically designed for Edge scenarios. There will be limited number of these scenarios. For example, lightweight, multi-region, all these things uh, should be uh, under consideration. And upstreams are uh, collaborations. OpenNFV is uh, quite good at uh, upstream collaborations. We, we are uh, integration um, project somehow. We, we have uh, lots of collaboration with uh, OpenStack, ONAP, and hope we could build this uh, uh, collaboration with uh, all the other uh, related uh, open source communities and standard communities as well, so that we could output the detailed requirements uh, for components in the relevant project and finally eventually integrated into OpenStack, OpenNFV uh, releases. And the last is about testing. OpenMV has a good basis for testing. We have our CI CD system. We have lots of uh, testing tools and testing frameworks. I hope that based on these uh, tools and frameworks, we could uh, define and develop testing, uh, uh, edge uh, test strategies and test cases. And uh, the scope of this project, like I said, uh, will focus on design and development of a reference platform that actually could be used for telco operators. Uh, this scope will actually include NFVI, VM, and MANO. And uh, we have sample VNFs in European feed, but uh, as my, my understanding, they are actually the, the sample VNFs which we could use to help us to build the infrastructure here. And the another aspects within China Mobile is about the field trial. I talk a lot about the China Mobile NovaNet experiment network. This is an experiment network we built to actually test the future network, network infrastructure and the whole architecture here. This uh, work is, uh, has begun in 2016. 
Uh, we actually finished uh, out the, the first two phases last year, mainly focusing on core, uh, ma mainly focusing on uh, services like uh, NB, which would be RAS CPE, and uh, Enterprise, which is CPE. But we would like to bring more focus on edge this year. So we, be, we try to begin the, we plan to begin the, the phase three of Novanet Experience Network this year, focusing more on edge. So these are some of the issues that we think we will bring testing for the phase three. Uh, for example, for hardware, we like to see the specific configuration and models for edge hardware. And for Veeam, like what I talking about, about multi-region and lightweight OpenStack, whether they are quite mature, whether there are any gaps in the industry. And about SDN, about lightweight SDN controllers and acceleration, we'll, we were planning to do some testing on acceleration so that we could work out the acceleration schema for multiple services. And also about the OpenStack Cyber project, which we think they are kind of solving the problem for acceleration or transparency, which will try to expose the acceleration uh, resources at the OpenStack level, and we'd like to dig more into this. So uh, I guess that's all for my presentation about the work. Uh, any questions? Uh, if you have questions, please go to the open mic so that we could record the, the whole questions here. Hey, and that was a great uh, talk. A couple of questions on uh, what do you see as the timing for the rollout, rollout of the edge deployments? And the second one is uh, what are your views on security uh, mm -hmm. for the edge? And yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, about timing, actually, we actually have a deadline for 5G. <laughs> that is something we actually have in mind. So you actually ha can come back uh, for that. The deadline for 5G uh, for China is 2020. We have the, the, the deployment for 5G. So now we actually begin lots of uh, a large scale field trial for 5G internally in China Mobile. Uh, but we see that uh, 5G, uh, the, the control plane for 5G, they could put in the core. So the core uh, TIG is uh, deployed this year. Uh, but the edge uh, TIG, we, we, we plan to have them deployed next year so that we could get in ready when the 5G eventually come in, in 2020. So that's the time frame. Uh, about security, we actually have uh, some uh, thinking about that. Uh, but I have to be sorry because I'm from the uh, network department. It, we have colleagues from the security department. They are looking into these things. Uh, probably I'm not expert on that, but I know that she is, uh, uh, she is actually doing uh, architecture design and research into the security for containers. And also about uh, if you have the remote provisioning, there are also security issues there. Uh, there are lots of ongoing work. But if you're interested, uh, you can send me an email and probably I will CC to her. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Fuchsia, uh, great uh, presentation. A lot of insights we got from this, especially on the uh, China, how you view the yeah. uh, cities and counties. For one county in uh, US, we think of as uh, bigger okay. than city. <laughs> so probably county refers to suburb that's my thinking, if I'm right on that, but... Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'm not native sp speaker, so we have a uh, different no, understanding. No, so the term, term county here, like mm -hmm. example, we say uh, Santa Clara County, it's huge, okay. that contains San Jose, that contains mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, small Sunnyvale, Santa Clara. So, so mm -hmm. cities are contained within that. Mm -hmm. Here, the county, what you refer, it appears to me is suburbs. Yeah. So that means you have a big city, uh, and surrounding that there are smaller. Yeah, actually, I think that the notation of city is uh, almost similar as what you call as county. Uh, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's, that's and what the I county mean. we have even might be smaller than the cities in in US, I guess. Yes. Counties like little town, they probably in the suburb uh, or countries, uh, things like that. They will be quite small. Yeah, and uh, other thing is when you said about five G right now. Mm -hmm. uh, what I find in the own app uh, use cases, they are trying to use the release 15, mm -hmm. uh, and that they are mixing that with Mac. So there is a bit of a confusion on if you take an application function, mm -hmm. which you are already describing different configuration you will have for city, county, and all mm -hmm. that. If that is applied, then how does it uh, impact? Uh, it's not clear right now. Very, very hazy on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, since you are participating in so many places like ONAP, OPNFE, uh, then you have Akrino coming from AT&T, mm -hmm. you got, so if you can uh, 
clarify a bit what area you will do where and how will it integrate not now i am not mm-hmm. asking now mm-hmm. as a white paper or something that will be yeah. of yeah. great value to the community Yeah, we actually are planning to do this work in OPN and Fee. Okay. We have some explanation. Uh, probably you could be interested to visit the wiki page. We actually sure. have some explanation about that. How we actually put each work in ONAP or CRINO and how we actually integrate it in OPN and yeah. Fee. Guess Thanks a lot and I hope you'll be able to do Thank collaborate. You. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Good presentation. Uh, I have been working for a telco company located in Mexico City. Mm-hmm. So I have seen that you have implemented uh, virtual machines, containers, uh, and it is uh, an ecosystem with many platforms and many technologies. Mm-hmm. My question is, how have you decided to, how have you chosen the, the platforms to be implemented in virtual machines and also the, the applications that you have decided to implement in containers? Mm-hmm. What's okay. the, the parameter or the reference that you have taken mm-hmm. as an initial point? Okay. Uh, I guess uh, some people might know that we have actually even more complicated problem in China Mobile. Like other operators, as I see that probably they will choose only one, uh, like OpenStack vendors, they will work collaborate closely with, and then they will build their whole network structure here. But for China, we have different problem because uh, China is a huge country. It's almost impossible for any one of the vendor to actually support the whole network in China. So now we are kind of uh, actually act exactly at the point that we would like to choose a few vendors that would work with us in the future for the network structure. But the, the selection effort actually is, uh, is huge. We kind of work out the whole specification about the APIs, making sure that these uh, OpenStack clouds, even though they are from different vendors, they have to have the same APIs, uh, they have to have same features so that we could act the same in the cloud. So this is a complicated problem for us. Internally, we have uh, quite uh, detailed specification for all this work. And you, you see that we have constructed that national experiment network. That is actually wh- how we want to promote this. But I have to admit, it's a huge effort actually to work out that. And about containers, uh, we actually have a quite a fierce debate within China Mobile about whether we should have com- containers or not. Uh, uh, which application is suitable to put in containers. But I, I have to say currently there is no conclusion here, but there are something we foresee. Like for control plane, we see that in core cloud, we have enough resources there. Probably the, the 5G control plane, they are uh, quite small. They probably could put in container, but not huge requirement for that. But for edge cloud, probably all those telco services like gateways, they are huge. They probably, it will be, difficult for them to actually put in containers. And also we have to require lots of efforts from the vendors as well. So we are actually, and what now we see is uh, the application from third party vendors, like MEC, MEC. China Mobile probably will try to provide MECP, but there will be lots of third party applications. There will be containers. These are the resources we have to provide to them. This is uh, actually the first thing that we think that will probably appear in our network. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please. Uh, you, you mentioned acceleration a couple of times. Uh, mm-hmm. What kind of acceleration capabilities are you uh, thinking of in terms of uh, mm-hmm. workload characteristics or whatnot? Yeah, we actually have uh, done lots of testing with uh, acceleration years back. Uh, at first, we are talking about the software acceleration like DBDK, things like that. Uh, they, they could be used in lots of uh, telco environments. And then we, we kind of figure out that when you move to Edge, when you use uh, 40 gigabit NICs, software cannot be set aside. Then we, we move into SROV and FPGA, smart NIC, uh, things like that, and hope that they could solve, us, uh, solve our problems. But also we have to look into the cost of these things. You know, FPGA is quite expensive. How, how much is the CPU core and how much is the FPGA? You have to compare that to, to make that decision. So currently, we're still working with a lot of accelerators uh, like SmartNIC, FPGA. We also have GPU tested. Also, we have a network processor tested. But I have to say we have no conclusion yet whether we, which one we should use, what kind of uh, application we'll be using that. These are, I guess, all based on lots of testing. Other questions? 
Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>